six months ago amongst flare filled, sold out stadiums in the Balkans. <laughs> we proved to you on the international break is anything but boring and actually the epitome of the best of football. Rhythm. Now, two months later, 10,000 kilometers west, there's 40 matches are played across four continents from Fiji to Finland. We find ourselves in a completely different region of the world. Completely different sets of cultures. A different set of people. One thing remains the same. The international break is on once again, and it means everything to this part of the world. And we begin this journey here in Colorado, USA, a country once considered a football in backwater that today is anything but, thanks to a thriving domestic game on and off the pitch and a newfound love for football or soccer that has gone from niche to very much mainstream. Trust me, like everywhere you go, this game is just getting massive. Every year it's getting bigger and bigger. It's truly a phenomenon of my generation. But ask any American where the USA soccer revolution all began and where it still peaks, and they'll tell you. Uh, say the national team. Yeah, the national team. The national team. The national team right here, that's what's at the heart of everything. The national team. Most Americans, the first time we ever got a glimpse of the game was through the international team. That's how we were introduced to the sport. Soccer is going because there's like a lot of cultures in America and stuff, and a lot of them are like Latino. They're bringing it to the Americans, and all the Americans are getting into soccer too. However, back in the day, America's incredible international community actually hindered their World Cup qualifiers when they played at home. We pride ourselves on being a big melting pot. However, in the football world, that can be a detriment. A while back when the U.S. would have games here, the majority of the fans in the stadium are from the other team. We used to be playing away games no matter where we were in the U.S. For the Americans didn't really feel that passion. We were playing Honduras in a qualifier. It was two to one Hondurans to Americans in the stadium. It felt like an away game. That's definitely changed. When I first got here, I was only Mexico. Even when Mexico wasn't playing against the U.S., I wouldn't necessarily care about the U.S. But now I'm kind of falling into the same like hype that everyone else is falling into. Uh, white, black, brown, you're American, you're gay, you're straight, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We can focus on more on what we have in common than what we have. And they, this shirt helps that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Look around. I mean, we've got every color and flavor of person and religion and political stance right here under this banner. And at the forefront of all of this is active support led by the American Outlaws, a national supporter group that has branches in every single state. American Outlaws is one of the reasons why football has grown. They travel everywhere around to go watch and play at every qualifier. They pack the stadium. It's huge, right? 193 chapters across the world, every game. Doesn't matter where you go. It's about growing the sport overall. All their support creates kind of a sense of community. Everyone's rooting for one team together. In fact, so popular has the US national team become that during the last World Cup when USA took on Belgium, the TV ratings for that match were higher than the NBA Finals and the Baseball World Series. The young generation is just embracing it. It's kind of a cool thing to do now. Basketball players are starting to love the football players. Are... You look at the ratings, you look at the attendance, we care about it here. Yeah. And with this newfound love, enthusiasm and following for the national team, whenever the international break comes back to America, it creates an incredible impact on whichever city hosts the match. The stars come back like pool six playing all the way in Dortmund and now he's here in our city. We were just walking down the street and we just see Pulisic walk in and we were, we were trying to keep our cool but we just couldn't see. If the international break wasn't on, we, we wouldn't have been able to experience that. A World Cup qualifying game day, we will we started at the bars early then we're gonna move about a thousand people on buses down to the stadium and then we're gonna march into the stadium. Bosnia, Montenegro, now USA. Let's do it. Hey! Right now, CONCACAF is in the final stage of qualifiers for the World Cup with a table known as the HEX, a six-team table where the top three teams go straight to the World Cup. The fourth place, they play off, and the bottom two, they're eliminated. 
Right now, for the first time in decades, the USA, if they don't get the maximum points here, next game's in Mexico away, and it's not looking good for qualification. Mexico. Nah, just joking, just the, the, the train station, please. Alright. to see the belief. This match is more controversial, it's more rivality. Now more than ever, 